My name is Daryl Kwao. Uh, Talking Business is live across our social media platforms at Joy Prime TV on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So I'm sure by now you have heard of Agenda 111. Government plans to construct uh, 111 hospitals across the country. And while well, that has gotten uh, local uh, construction players excited because 70% uh, of the investment will be retained here in the country, we have been speaking with them in this report filed by my colleague Naya, Nanaya Ojima. The Agenda 111 initiative to boost the health sector is described as the biggest investment in the sector. President Akufuado at a ceremony to kickstart the projects at Chede in the Ashanti region stated the government deliberately carved the initiative to inspire economic growth and provide jobs. Agenda 111 has been carefully thought through to inspire activity and growth in various sectors of the economy and also help bring jobs to the youth. 20 Ghanaian consulting firms made up of architects, civil, structural, electrical and mechanical engineers, quantity surveyors, biomedical engineers and other technical teams have designed these hospitals to reflect our unique domestic requirements including impact of climate, socio-cultural conditions, and traditional practices. They will also supervise the construction of these hospitals. Already, 250 domestic contractors have been selected to construct 103 of the district hospitals to cost $16.8 million each. It is estimated that 12 million of the total amount invested in the project will be retained in the country and the remaining amount used in sourcing equipment. The execution of Agenda 111 will require significant domestic inputs, which will give impetus to private sector investments into the one district, one factory policy. I expect Ghanaian entrepreneurs to take advantage of the opportunities provided by the significant investment and produce quality building and construction materials required by the hospitals. Fourthly, we have incorporated into this agenda a strategy of direct and indirect job openings to stimulate the economies of the various communities in which the facilities are to be located. Meanwhile, the investment is expected to help boost local economy, with the construction industry being the major beneficiary. Kwabna Nyako is project consultant. Um, it's going to be very, very significant um, impact on the industry because it's going to give a lot of jobs to local contractors. Um, a lot of money will be pumped into the local economies because on each construction site you're going to have um, building material suppliers, food sellers, transportation, you know, people bringing sand and stones and chippings and other materials to the site. So it's going to pump a lot of money into the local economy and it's going to help the recovery, you know, of, of the, 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 the general economic recovery after COVID, you know, and I believe it's, it's going to have a significant impact. Well, um, our next story takes us to the oil and gas sector where um, co-chair of the Ghana Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative, Dr. Steve Mantiao, has been defending the GMPC's move to acquire some uh, more oil blocks. Now, according to him, it is important for technology transfer, technical transfer rather, and building the capacities here in Ghana. But he is asking for further assessment to be made before we acquire those blocks. Here is him speaking to Joy Business. We are, we are an emerging oil producing country. These international oil companies have been able to maximize their benefits. They made a lot of profit from extracting hydrocarbons, and now they are investing these profits in renewables. If we were to abandon our fossil fuel in the ground, the only option we have as a country is to go and borrow to invest in renewables. I don't support that. I would rather that in the interim, between now and the next 60 to 80 years that the EU projects, the transition will last. Let's GMPC move in there, 
produce oil, let's make all the money we can and then have a national strategy that reprioritizes the ABFA and invest in renewable energy technology. But another argument is that they are going to borrow to buy this. Uh, shares or states. Yeah. And, and they don't see the business sense in it. Yeah, but all the companies, the international oil companies, they borrow. We are not going to be the first entity to borrow to finance our operations. The question we should be asking is that when we borrow X amount, what profit do we get when we invest? I think that is the picture or the side of the picture that my colleagues are not looking at. GMPC does not have the capacity. And that is why, and what gladdens my heart is the fact that under this arrangement, GMPC and, and, and Ake are going to set up a joint operating company. So GMPC becomes the apprentice. They are going to teach them. They will learn how to do it by doing it. And then they transition and GMPC takes over. You can't have, and, and in fact, there's no monetary value to this arrangement. Ake is not going to charge us for training us to be able to do it. The thoughts of uh, Dr. Steve Mantial there. Finally, the Bank of Ghana is taking several steps to ensure that we go uh, fully cash light. And so it has begun engaging fintechs uh, on how small businesses can be assisted in the digitalization drive. Here's our report from that engagement. The engagement by the Bank of Ghana is coming under its Business Science Borders Programme that seeks to develop a network of digital platforms to aid cross-border trading program brought together some bank managing directors, directors at the Bank of Ghana, fintech operators and business leaders in the country. Opening the forum, governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison, noted that the time is right to give small businesses all the needed assistance so they are not left out as we move towards the era where little cash is used in all financial transactions. One of the objectives of the payment systems reforms is to achieve financially inclusive and an economically empowered society. Delivering an economically empowered society hinges on strong SMEs, which account for close to 90% of businesses. Therefore, facilitating SMEs participation in a digital economy should enhance efficiency, extend market reach, and build their capacity to generate employment opportunities and boost economic growth. In addition, the broad-based acceptance of digital payments by SMEs will scale up products and services deployment and provide digital footprints for improved credit services by financial service providers. The governor also added that as a host of the African Free Trade Area Secretariat, Ghana must take the lead in developing the required digital platforms to aid international trade. With massive investment in the financial sector infrastructure, a reliable and widespread telecommunications infrastructure, a biometric national ID of high coverage, a robust and resilient banking sector, and a vibrant fintech ecosystem, the stage is set to facilitate Ghanaian SMEs effective participation in the global economy via these initiatives. In 2020, the Bank of Ghana took another bold step to address SME's asset to digital merchant wallets with the creation of three tier merchant account categories. This enabling piece of policy has flexible and proportionate onboarding requirements that recognize the peculiarities of businesses within the SME category. Dr. Ernest Addison argued that as a regulator, together with government, they have provided a required supportive environment when it comes to policy regime for banks, special deposit institutions, fintechs and SMEs to fully take off when it comes to us moving towards a cashless economy. Great stuff. And that's uh, Talking Business this morning. Remember, there's always some more news on our website, myjoyonline.com forward slash business. My name is Daryl Kwa. Thanks for watching.